Director of Marketing and Communication. No, we want to see the public society. Public yeah, absolutely. If you'd like to follow me, he's going to meet you in level 10 in the training room. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks, Sorry, it's just that nobody told me you were here. No, don't worry. Mm -hmm. I went to the bathroom and I, I saw you. And I saw you and I thought, and I rang Peter. Okay. Yeah. So his name's Peter Carr. Yeah, that's right. Is that Khan or Khan't? Khan, C A R N. Oh, okay. that's Khan't. No. So that's on me. No, that's okay. John, don't I? That's right. Yes. And I think I knew you from university days. You were president of the Students Union at one stage, weren't you? No, I was the education vice president. Oh, right. Hello. Bernie Neville. Bernie. Oh, I've heard of you. Hello, Bernie. How are you? I'm sure you have. Peter. Peter Carr. Hello, Carl Rustin. Rustin, I think you're Rustin. Have you? I'm Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Peter Carr. Thank you. Now, how can we help you? What's the problem? Russell's got some questions about what's happening with his property. Just before we go on, could you introduce... Oh, sorry. Peter Carr, public trustee. Ian, Ian Campbell's my name. Ian is the lawyer being been handling the file. Ian Campbell. Greg Chapman, Greg lawyer. Chapman. Greg has banking experience. You're a very experienced banking lawyer. Yep. Mark Crofton. Mark Crofton is the deputy public trustee and official solicitor. He heads up our legal team. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Russell, you've got some questions. Uh, Number one, what has happened to my building at 26 Holland Street, West End? Well, I think you should put that question to the Challenger Bank and to the lawyers, Norton Rose. I think they're the lawyers for Challenger Bank. We have no control. Enough. We cannot have anything to do with that. It's totally out of our hands. Excuse me. Yes. On the 12th of October 2009, when we had, when we had the friends of the Hinsa House had control of Hinsa House, we was $13,000 in debt to Challenger Bank. Now, I'd approached the unions and I'd got tenants in there. I was about to get tenants in there. One was from the clothing and footwear. And they had one of the smallest offices in that building. And they was paying $20,000 a year for it. I was well informed that the unions would be sending tenants across to me. But on the say-so of the world Marcos, I believe, you came into the picture. Now, as public trustee, and having the fiduciary for Carl Ross Taylor, you was responsible for that building. You took it deeper into debt, and all the tenants vacated that building. You, you took equity out of that building by mismanagement. Now, you are responsible for the Challenger Bank taking over that building. There's no ifs and buts about it. Now, when I got Frank Carroll, criminal lawyer, to give me power of attorney and a revocation of the power of attorney for Brian Lever, and I had him removed from that building, we got together, a group of people who was friends, and we went and approached Frank Carroll again and we was getting a, a, a board of trustees brought into it, right? Now, let's have a look at what's happened over the last two years. I don't know what friends Brian Labour has, or what the Labour name, what protection it gives him, or his partner, Barrister Gibbon, 
but nothing has been done about that man till day to day. I've given you information upon information as to fudge figures given to John George and to a Barrison. Now, you've not even interviewed Barrison, but I've got a, a letter here where it says that this man was sick at the time. And what commercial one had John Plowright said? He went to Challenger Bank and said that that loan should not be given. That loan should not be given. But what happened was Brian Labour hot footed it up to Noosa to see his mate, his old school mate, a Jeff Rigby. Now, this man has probably got law experience, but no medical experience. But he assessed this man and he got him to sign papers. That in itself was fraud. Now, when we look at it, and these financial advisors, 600 and odd thousand was taken with the Bank of Queensland. That could not be serviced, so these people, these financial advisors, gave their backing with the fudged figures, all fudged figures and lies, to the Challenger Bank to raise another loan of $1.3 million. All that money's gone missing. It's a criminal act. You will act on this woman, and rightly so, but she came off the rank after Carlos Taylor case, and you pursued that. Uh, now, just, just wait, just wait, just, just wait, oh, sorry, I, I, just wait. I will not interrupt you. Right. I will not interrupt you when you start talking. Well, right. You. Criminal activity has taken place here. You go down to Five Marley Street, and you see that his house has been refurbished fully out of this man's money. I gave to you, Ian, the name of a woman, a jeweller, that I traced myself after all for all his jewellery, and you never interviewed that woman. You never got in touch with her. But that man's this man's jewellery is worth forty-eight thousand dollars. The crimes that can be committed against this man are not pursued is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. Can I just make a point? You make the emphasis and the point you're making very strongly is the criminal activity, as you call it, of Brian Labour. Please go to the police. The police are there to investigate criminal activity, not this organisation. What did you tell me when I sat down with Mitch Thompson and Robert Gaines? That you would go to the police, you would treat it as a fraud, and that was this time last year. What I said to you was that if this stuff got to the situation where you, we couldn't help you here in a civil thing, we would make available stuff for you to take. We will make it available. Make all the records that we have, all the material we have, we'll give to you to give to the police. Okay, thank you very much. I'll appreciate that. But what we want at this moment in time, what we want at this moment in time, and required at this moment in time, is the power of this office to go to Challenger Bank and wind that loan back to March the 17th till this criminal investigation has taken place. We do not want that building selling because it belongs to the community, it was given to the community, and it was stolen from the community. Sorry, you want to raise back. The other thing is um, that when on false information that you were given by Will Marcus, who I think you've probably found out now is a pathological liar, like his friend Brian Labor, um, you acted on that, and we were assume in good faith, thinking that, that Ross was being ripped off again. And yet, when Labor was asked to come in and answer questions, he said, oh, he was busy. This is a man that coaches tennis on Saturdays, Saturday mornings, plays three hours of tennis on Wednesday. He was too Sorry, busy. Sorry, can I just stop and a then I just, I'm not days. happy about this camera on us all the time. What is that? What are you doing? What, yeah, is that? I'm just it's providing a record, a record for, for, whom? For, whom? for both of us. But have you asked our authority? Yes. 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 Uh, well, uh, Peter was meeting. aware that I was okay. recording, no, no, I, yes, from I the just, beginning. I wasn't sure what this meeting was about, so now I am. Mm. Mark, you want to make a point? Yeah, look, I, 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 I'm a bit concerned about a range of things. Um, the first thing is that the public trustee, Peter, has been appointed as administrator. Mm -hmm. It is, it is that there are very strict requirements as to confidentiality about the affairs of somebody for which uh, the public trustee or anybody is appointed as administrator. It is not appropriate, and indeed in some respects it is unlawful for there to be a publishing or a discussion of those affairs with others. That's a function of the Guardianship and Administration Act. So without speaking to this particular matter, can I suggest that we cannot lawfully discuss, discuss the intricacies of this matter 
when we know that it's going to be published, because it's been bid out, it is just not lawful. Why? This, because the Guardianship Act prevents it. You can only disclose, let alone publish, information, information about an adult for whom you were appointed administrator when it's lawfully appropriate to do so, and otherwise you are not allowed to. Ross is I, I, I appreciate that. Today. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But again, with the greatest of respect to Mr. Ross Taylor, the tribunal has appointed the public trustee as administrator. It is not possible for anybody, including Mr. Ross Taylor, to waive the requirements of the law and to generally publish information about his affairs. Why did you assume it would be published? I, I, I'm, I'm not making an assumption about anything. I make an observation that the recording of material generally is for republishing. And so, and so more generally, I just make that observation. The second observation I'd like to make, and the advice I've given Peter is, we need to, well, Peter is content and happy to uh, uh, have a discussion about these affairs, but quite appropriately, you, you, you've suggested they involve legal issues and the capacity to review the actions of others. So as I understand it, the concern is about the public trustee taking some action against others in respect of actions they took prior to the public trustee's involvement. And the concern is, please, would you please take some action? Because others have done the wrong thing by Mr. Ross Taylor. Okay. Now, just let me finish. All of those matters, and, and generally, have been referred for legal advice. Council has been engaged to advise, so a barrister is advising, and that is appropriate and necessary. And might I also add, the public trustee corporately has paid for that advice uh, sure in, in, in those circumstances. And I'm, I'm not looking to make, to make any other point than the public trustee has sought to act and get it advised. Beyond that, though, I'm very concerned, given the nature of the others who you refer to, that we cannot and should not waive privilege over that advice by discussing it intricately. That is, if, if in general terms, the advice were to be discussed, the content of the advice discussed. That is anything beyond the fact that I've suggested to you that advice exists, that we talk about the detail of it, and it's published. Peter runs the risk of waiving the right to keep that advice confidential and privileged. It's Peter's right to say, I have some advice and I want to take some action. Now, if he waives privilege, by speaking about the advice, another party who, who may want that advice can say, privilege has been waived, therefore you can, we can have a copy of that advice. Now clearly when we're talking about here, possible litigation, and that's what we are talking about, we're, that, that's the purpose for which the advice was sought, mm -hmm. we desperately do not want to run the risk or any risk that the parties against whom we might litigate can get a copy of our own advice. So, so appreciate that my advice, which, which Peter's authorised me to share with you, is first, the law doesn't allow him to generally talk about Mr. Ross Taylor's affair. Now, that's not Peter's concern. I need to advise Peter, but I do so generally for you that it's just not lawful to republish and talk about the affairs about an adult who QCAT has determined to have an incapacity. It's not appropriate to talk about his financial affairs generally, particularly if there's a prospect of a republishing, or at least. So I understand that there's a reticence. Second, we cannot, sorry, Peter can waive privilege over legal advice he's obtained. 
Peter would be unwise to do so and has given me instructions that he intends not to. Not because of concern to discuss with Mr Ross Taylor and his close supporters, of whom you clearly are, not out of concern for that, but concern that uh, the fact of the waiver of privilege, an action which allows the document or the, the advice to be known to any other, may be taken as a waiver of privilege generally. And that allows, in the course of litigation, I'll give you a scenario, uh, uh, let's not use this, this affair, uh, an advice exists from me, I'm a lawyer, I'm the official solicitor to him. There is a general discussion in, let's say, a public forum, a meeting, about the contents of that. Somebody asks a question about the content of the advice, and then there is a discussion about what the advice said. At that point, privilege is waived. If we sue, if the public trustee were to sue, based upon the advice, and it's a good idea to sue this person, that person is entitled to that advice. Let's assume for the moment, as advices do, that it says, these are the strengths of your case and these are the weaknesses of your case. That, of course, gives the opportunity to the opposing person to exploit the weaknesses of the case. Now, this isn't a fanciful, this isn't an unusual, this isn't a, a unique concern. It happens, and it's happened frequently in litigation. Um, so, understand, finally, and just in summary, Peter cannot talk about confidential affairs of Mr Ross Taylor generally with others because the Act doesn't allow him. Second, he cannot talk about the advice. Peter, Peter has instructed me to, to let you know that advice, including information which has been very usefully supplied by some people in this room, um, advice is being sought and is being considered presently. I, I and, and, and finally, I might say this. Peter is also very, very conscious, more conscious today than he was yesterday, let me say, about the concerns in respect of this particular property. We understand yesterday, the issue. This has been three Sorry, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not putting a particular time frame on. I'm saying I, we appreciate you coming and we appreciate the, con the, the concerns that you, you pointed out about the building. We are conscious, Peter's conscious of it. Okay, don't forget the, the no, I, beyond that. involved. No. Okay, I'm not going to mention the criminals involved in this. What then, how then can we ask why the administrator of the building, which was appointed by this department, I know it's not department, Fongo, whatever, why did he not do his job? He promised leases to the tenants. Right. Now, if that place had have been leased out, it would have provided him with his wage. It certainly would have been a cost to this department or Congo, or however you would call themselves. It would have provided a Ross with a living and he wouldn't have to go on the pension. And it would have kept Challenger off our backs, off Ross's backs, because at least until some legal matter was dealt with that you can't discuss, at least the interest would have been paid to Challenger and we would not be at the point now that Ross is going to be, if this sale goes through, is going to be left absolutely destitute. So who do we complain to about that? The administrator who did not do his job. All the tenants left because they did not get the leases that that man promised them. His name was Daniel Moore, I believe. Yeah, I could have that wrong. Brave for you, yes. Yeah. Have you finished? I want to say something if I can. Yeah, I'll I just want, I just want to make one point. No, I, want, I want to make one point. I, 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 I don't, I'm not, I don't say that out of any delight or concern, but it just happened, both of those things are just true. We don't want to waive privilege on this because there are serious issues that are for which advice are being sought. So, okay, what can we do about the administrator? Well, you can bring an application to QQ, the magistrator. That's we have already. I presume you're talking about the public trustee. You have the right to go to QCAT 
and ask QCAT to review the actions of the public trustee. Mm -hmm. That's what QCAT's there for. I'd urge yes. you to do that. QCAT can't. I mean, QCAT has to, if you bring an application, will have to consider that application. So if you have concerns about the actions of the public trustee, QCAT is an organisation that's there to review and oversight the actions of the public trustee. You simply need to bring an application before QCAT for that purpose. That was done by it me. Was done. Right. right. And just you, so you, you brought it, you brought an application to review it. I provided a response to QCAT. Okay. That's right. I've seen I told the them. I've got it all. I told them that we were getting it. Getting advice yeah. in relation to the no, we're not talking about library markets. I'm just, talking about your administrator yeah, that did not do his job. Can I just interrupt here? Can I just—it's important that I interrupt here. Yes, you asked me to take a certain action, or we to take a certain action with QCAT. I took that. I saw your letter. I've got it at home on file, right? But QCAT informed me that no, it wasn't going to happen. To sit round and talk about this problem as we're talking about it now. That's what QCAT it. told me. I made the correct application, I did everything by the book, and I was refused to sit round and talk about the matter like we're doing that. But going past all that, the most important issue here now is we want Challenger, we want the Challenger Bank to hold the sale of that building until this matter is decided. Now, when I sat down with you last year, and you were saying, it, we, we'd, we'd, we'd have the answer in January and then you change it to the first week in February. But one of the issues there was, correct me if I'm wrong, the water tank, the $50,000 water tank. That was a way of getting Marcus because Marcus came in here with a shirt and tie on and all dressed up and it was the biggest con man you've ever seen in Brisbane. But he took $5,000 out of that $50,000 that he wasn't entitled to. Now it's taken all that time for me to approach Tony Burke's office, the environment minister people, and I got a reply yesterday. They're going to take action. You did not tell me that in February of this year, you decided nothing else was going to do, be done about it with the federal police after speaking with the federal police. Nothing was going to be done about it. Well, that, that's it. They're just going to open the case again now. Now, this is a pressure that's been brought through the state attorney general's office, Mark Craven, right? Now, he got onto that. But this is what I'm saying. We've been so frustrated. Why was Will Marcos not made to vacate that building in 2009? I told you he did not have any claim on that building. John George would tell you the same. Barry Sims would tell you the same. And that is why he contacted you people. Now, that rent's been wasted since 2009, 2010, 2011. He's been sat there as a squatter. And now, what are you going to do? Interest. That would appear can, at the Challenger can Bank. Can I just address the water tank issue? Yes. Firstly, um, that's a matter that the, the federal department, I think it's environmental department, so that's right. um, were inquiring in relation to that. They sent me a letter and asked me about it. Okay. I gave them all the details in relation to it. I spoke to a lawyer appointed by them and gave them all the details. Selenic. And said, you want anything? Let me know and I'll provide further information to them. So I gave them all the information that I had in relation to it. It was an issue, as far as I'm concerned, that they're dealing with, they're investigating. I haven't heard back from them since I provided with all the information. He will tell you that I sent everything I had to them and had an offer to provide them with anything further. All right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'd like to say something. Yes, sir. Um, Westpac Bank has actually had some uh, files that they've done a, an analysis of the uh, transactions that we've been talking about. Uh, yeah. The um, transactions that relate to the, the loan agreement that uh, Ross was subordinated to some uh, by Marcos and Labor. Now, that those, uh, those files were sent to you April of this year, April, and um, you have, if you had performed any kind of talking to Al about things that are criminal in nature, but I'd like to talk about the accounting side of it. Sure. Uh, accountability. The, uh, the, the, um, the, those files demonstrate some highly irregular accounting behaviour. Transactions and specifically to the, uh, the loan documents. Um, what I'm talking about here 
areas that there was a low with uh, manage, management investments, 1.3 million, and um, uh, in order for that uh, loan to go ahead, the um, challenger principal uh, in the matter of Dunbar instructed that not only uh, should not the, the uh, power of attorney sign the document, but also uh, not to accept the, uh, the, the signing of the owner of the building, Ross Taylor, because of the question of the capacity. So the, the bank was clearly briefed as to the, uh, uh, the, the real ethical and legal difficulties that they had in taking out this loan arrangement. Um, now, Jeffrey B. signed that document of legal capacity, but that doesn't excuse the bank from its unconscionable behaviour. And of course you're familiar with this because I sent you a letter many months ago now uh, about it. And um, I can't really grasp, um, regardless of all uh, the, the criminal behaviour that, that Bernie and Maggie are talking about, I simply can't grasp how as an administrator could sit by and allow the bank, firstly, to go to the Supreme Court of Queensland and have the cable on that property uh, removed and allow for there to be an order of the Supreme Court where they clearly were not furnished with all the information that you had. Um, and that is, it was not the role of the bank to forgive the $168,032 that, um, that Will Marcos obtained. It was not their role to forgive that in that settlement in the Supreme Court because um, it, it was not their money to forgive. It was always Ross's money. And the transaction had gone in exactly the wrong direction. If, um, if Marcos was claiming one-sixth share in the property, it is he who should have paid the $168,032 and plus actually because the valuation was not correctly done. But it was actually he who should have done that. So you sat by and watched um, the bank clear the decks in order to, having already made a transaction which was unconscionable, you then allowed them to um, uh, give the uh, bring into play the default force in the, in the loan document, put it into the hands of the, of the uh, receiver, and then have, have it sold. That's my understanding of the property is sold. So I think that you, you know, effectively you've got some really serious problems. You know, you're advising us about um, how we should be engaging with because no, I'm, not, I'm relating to you the advice that I'll give to my clients. Sorry, look, just so that you're, you're, you're trying to tell us about that. About, about the uh, the because you know, the damages come to you because you allowed this over a period of two and a half years where you've been damaged with sufficient documents to make a very strong case against the bank. It's unfortunate. Well, that goes to precisely the legal advice that I spoke of that you can't discuss. Thank you. Well, it's a bit late, isn't it, for you to go to the bank if this is what you're saying for unconscionable behaviour when there's already another party now that has equitable interests in the property. Okay, settlement date supposed to be the 15th. But you've allowed that to actually get go into train, so you've brought in another party that should never have been there. We haven't brought in you have by yeah. your neglect. If your neglect in yeah. any event, we, we, we now go to the heart of the legal issues that we talked about. Also, also, the behaviour of some of the staff has also been highly inappropriate. I mean, this Sally Dreghorn rings up Bernie and says when the what? last tenant leaves, oh, Ross really won't mind 
will he if we give Mark Pelmore the shelves? And Bernie said, yes, Ross will not. He's been ripped off of oh, one of the shelves. $8,500. He will not. He's got nothing bloody left, and they cost him $8,500. So she goes, oh, you know, dithers. So Ross comes in, I, we bring Ross, he comes in early the next morning. We go down to the building to say to Mark, look, sorry, we've got nothing against you. You were really screwed, like every other tenant in this building, by the ex CEO of the building. And um, however, they did cost 8500 and talk about a deal. And the shelves have already all been removed. God. Now, why would she be ringing up that belong to him? It's not bits of furniture that can be taken out and stolen. Okay. We're talking about fittings. And that's okay. And apparently, it's not that people didn't know. Why would this Sally Dreghorn be ringing and saying, oh, but, you know, Ross really won't mind. All right, well, thank you very much. I now understand your issues. And I will discuss these matters with my team and we'll take appropriate action. Any issues you have in regard to the public trustee, I urge you to go to QCAT. We've done that. We'll do. I've already done that. I, no, I want an answer to my yes, question right. now. Yes. I want an answer to my question now. I don't have... We'll we go back, just wait, we we'll go back to... Uh, I'm I'm we're I'm I'm paying I'm your wages, mate. We're blessed. Exactly. We're, 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 we're blessed. We're blessed. We've listened. We've listened. Sorry, that's why this house. Yeah, We've listened to you without interruption. Hours. Right? I'm sorry, what's that? Do, sorry, do, the, do the same for me, will you? Burn. Just do the same for me. We've all listened and done. Where do you want to take this? I just I'll get I, it. You come into this building, hand. yes, and I, out of courtesy, have met with you. I just need to have an understanding. Where, how do you want to? Where do you want to take this today? Right, I'll tell because you. Because I have not. Just wait. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Tell you. We want. We want the lawn. Winding back with Challenger Bank to the 17th of March 2007. We want the stop of to sale of this building. This building was given to the West End community through the generosity of this man, and it's, it's been stolen from the West End community. Don't speak and say smirking. I wasn't smirking, madam. Well, look, just forget that. Just, just don't let's have a bum fight. You, you just heard what I said. Thank you. What, okay. what is your response to what I requested? My response is I'm, I'm the public trustee's lawyer. The public trustee will be giving <coughs> advice on that and other matters. <coughs> and then the public Stop the sale of the building. <coughs> that and other matters, it does. It's to stop the sale I of the building. I work a lifetime for that building, mate. Absolute life. I know exactly. 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 You need to. You need a boy in a you, you've got a boy you've got in a wrong way. way. This when is the client of the public trustee. You know, it's he that. you should be talking to. You you to. You're, Western Australia. Australia. you're not. You're fobbing us off. You're saying you're going to go away and talk about it in private. That is that should be discussed now. We have discussed them. You haven't discussed them. You haven't told us what you're going to do. You've, you've actually said you're not going to actually talk about anything. No, I'll explain to you the constraints that are visited upon the public trustee, and they are not, they are genuine, they are real. And it's a matter for the public trustee as to what he wants to do with that advice. Okay, then look, can, we, can I just, one final, yes, and we won't trouble you anymore. It's fine. Right. I will go down with Mr. Carlos Taylor while you make him mind up, and we will occupy the building. Now, are you going to bring the police in to remove us? Yes. You are? Yes. Okay then. You'll have to do that. You'll have to have us arrested. Why would we go down there? That's what's taking you. Yeah, you're doing that to me. No, I would ask you to leave that. Just out of courtesy. I mean, I've, I've invited you in. I've listened to you. I now have to get advice. And then I have to act on that advice. That's all I can do. You have recourse. If you have any complaints or issues in regard to the conduct of the public trustee, you do have recourse. I'm not going to and I do urge you to do, take that up. This sort of conduct is, this doesn't get anywhere. Well, I keep us on these premises. How would you feel if I walked into your house and sat down in your kitchen and said, I'm not leaving? But this is not what your you house. Do? I would, would be fantastic because I would have you on the floor and I would make you answer questions. I I'd have answered yeah, questions. You have I have answered questions. questions. What are you, action are you going to take yeah. about the uncomfortable behaviour yeah. of the ban? I've got, I've got legal advice coming from the barristers. Two and a half years after that uncomfortable behaviour, getting legal advice? Yes. Two and a half years? Yes. Two and a half years, so they can get him legal advice in about 12 months ago. All right. I will make an urgent application to QCAT. I will make an urgent application to QCAT for the review. And if any other person wants to be the administrator for us, 
they can be Now that the building's sold? No, you no. can be the administrator. No, you I still would like to know, one of the questions is, he gets a phone call the other morning. He rings us when he's very distressed and he yes. doesn't understand anything, saying, stop carrying on about your building, the building's been sold. Now, so who? To my, to my oh, answer. no, don't worry about them. They were just the real estate agents bullying and we'll get on to them. Yeah. But why does someone from this department bring him and say, stop carrying on your buildings being sold? Did I just hear I, you I correctly? Spoke, did you just offer to resign from being the administrator? No, I said if, if it is, you want to bring an I'll bring an application for the QCAT to consider the activities of the public administrator, uh, public trustee. And if one, if another person wants to take up the role as administrator, and the, and the QCAT believes that that person is appropriate, then the QCAT will appoint that person. That's what's available. Two and a half years after you've sat on your hands. Haven't sat on your hands. Yes, you have. We haven't sat on your hands. Well, why didn't you let them go to the Supreme Court to clear the last impediment to sale? We haven't sat on your hands. This whole, could I ask you please to leave? You have not informed us of a single thing I that have. you've done. I have. What have you done? I've got legal advice and I'll be acting on that legal advice. What's the legal advice? I can't discuss the, the legal advice. The property's been sold. And I own the building. I can't I discuss the legal advice with you, unfortunately. Because I, as, as Marcus said, I waive privilege if I do that. So, so we go down to him's house sorry, now and occupy that sorry, building. Sorry, we'll there's privilege thing. in this room between you and your client. I, I can this is rubbish. What, what you've just said, if you're, if you're serious, you, you, you're telling me that there's privilege about us talking about the unconscionable behaviour and transaction that occurred in 2009 and, 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 and the subsequent actions relating to that. How, how, do, you, how do you get advice? How do you formulate um, a, a legal case unless you listen to and, and, and interact with the people that are giving you that, that advice? They've provided you with an enormous amount of information. You're talking about courtesy you haven't shown them any courtesy. You haven't responded to the information that they've given you. From You've the just said there's no privilege. Either. That's, that's okay. nonsense. You can't say that. Yes, we can. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's the law. And we've acted on the no, law. Look, 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 look. I get this all the time. People say this is, lawyers get up and say this is the law, this is the way it is. And then you go to the, you know, in a, a recent case um, in the Bernashire Council, every single lawyer swore. But on a stack of Bibles, that there was no way that the that the um, Australian Workers Union would ever get a chase challenging the uh, amalgamation of that shire. No way they were ever going to get it. They went to the court and they got the and they got it. So you, you know, don't tell me what the law is when all you've got is just one person's opinion. Let me make it clear. I'm not advising you. I shared with you advice as I've given the public trustee. I am not your lawyer. That's right. So therefore, please don't uh, mistake what I said as advices to you. I, I, I owe no duty to you, sir. I am the public trustee's lawyer. The public trustee will accept my advice or get other advice or, and but, but choose to Mark, act in the Mark, face of I'm my advice. Is that Peter I, Khan, as the public trustee, owes a duty to his client first. Yes. Um, all no things. question. And I agree. So, absolutely. We don't believe that that's been done. We understand that that's the advice, that, that that's the message. And we're trying to get to the clear. heart of the matter, Can the I heart of what, where, where everything went wrong, and that was when the bank lent 1.3 million dollars when it was clear that there was a difficulty in paying off a 600,000. They never checked to see if I had the ability to pay it off. I understand. Did you have an interview, Mr. Barry Sims? No. no, you never did. Took two well, years to get Mr. I'll give Mike you the I'll give you the conversation now because meeting? this is very just wait, this is very important. This conversation I had with Barry Sims in 2009. Now Barry Sims, I didn't solicit this information, but we was talking about what had gone on down at Ems House with Brian Labour. He turned out and he said to me, when Ross Taylor's last property was sold at Cooper's Plain, that. His wife, when he went home and told her that night, broke down in tears and cried. So I phoned Barry Sims up about four weeks ago, and I wanted some information as to how they managed to get these fudge figures past Challenger with John George. You interviewed John George. Right. Now, 
Barry Sims came back and he said to me, I will send you a letter. So I phoned him when the letter never came. So I said, you promised me some information. He said, oh, after speaking to my lawyer, he said, I'm not willing to send it now. So I said, well, you might just answer me one question then. When we were sat down at Gloria Jeans in the West End in 2009, June 2009, you gave me some information I didn't solicit. You told me that your wife broke down and cried. I said, why would she do that if everything was above board? He said, I'll send you the letter. And the letter was that it was not in a fit state to raise that loan. Now there is Barry why didn't you speak to him when I gave you the information about this Madison, that he should have been a person that should have been interviewed, but he wasn't. I'll take it up. Okay then, the other thing is, has that building been sold now? Has the building been sold now? Okay, then you're still the owner who will go occupy it. Well, thank you very much, and I will get on to this matter urgently. I appreciate you coming and raising these matters with you. Now that you've highlighted them, I certainly take that. We have tried every other option in nearly three years. Thank you. We're not here to waste your time. No, no, I'm not saying you are wasting my time. I appreciate your time. You'll make a little baggage down. Yeah, here we go now. No, that one's going up. It will change it. There you go. Yes, it will. I'm traveling the lift with you. Thank you. Your building, your lift. Now they should pay the taxes. Hello, Gorgie. Public trustees entirely self funded. Um, it's not a taxes for Hey, look, by the way, I'm, I'm the official solicitor. Uh, I don't get paid more or less depending on whether actions are taken or not. We t I take my job very seriously, and I am taking this matter very seriously. I appreciate I've, I've, Ian Campbell That's works a for me. I, it's a very it. difficult matter. It's one of the most complex and concerning matters I've seen in my career, and I'm old. What? What? Well, well, and I personally ran the ban case, so I'm personally looking at this case genuinely. I'm a I'm I'm a property law specialist by trade. Some things you can make right, some things you can't. We'll, I'll certainly approach it with the kind of endeavour that you would want us to. Well, now you so. can accept that assurance or not. You don't know me. But we're not um, going away. But but and, and 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 I don't think it's a bad thing that you came in, and I appreciate your time. I genuinely do. I, can I just offer somebody a card? And it's, I would it's, like it's, to it's, say it's to a, you, it's got a mobile phone number on it. That we um, have done everything by I, the book. I know. Jumped I, up and I know, down I know, for nearly three I know. years. This is a tough one because of what happened.